So last lesson we looked at how to graph using standard form of an equation, which was ax plus by equals c, and we were looking at finding intercepts. Today we're going to look at the equation um, y equals mx plus b, which is what's called slope-intercept form, and graph from that. And some of you may already be familiar with it. But to do that, we need to know what slope is. So slope is basically um, the ratio of the rise to the run. So it's um, how steep a graph is. And the rise is going to be your change in y, which is y2 minus y1. And the run is going to be the change in x, which is x2 minus x1. So you can use any two points of a non-vertical line to find slope. And we have different types of slope that I would want you to be able to recognize. So a positive slope is when a line goes up from left to right. A negative slope is when it goes down from left to right. Slope of zero is the horizontal line. And what's called undefined is a vertical line. And why is this undefined? It's because this will give us, for example, a slope of, and we use m to represent slope. For example, m would equal one over zero. And we can't divide by zero, right? So that's why it's undefined. So you want to know that vocabulary as well, OK? So we want to be able to find a slope of a line given a line and also given two points. So if we take a look at the first example, we want to describe the slope of the line and then find the actual value. So for A, we can clearly see it's going up from left to right. So this is a positive slope, right? In B, we see it going down from left to right. So this would be a negative slope. And then I want you to tell me what is the actual value of the slope? What's that rate of change? So then you can think about the slope formula, which we're going to do in the tables. Um, but think about also counting rise and run. So I always like to go left to right because that's the way we you know, read and everything. So we're going to go in that order. And I want to see, am I going up or down? And then count that distance. And that's going to be the rise. So I went up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Up is positive on my number line, so my rise is 6. Then I'm going to go ahead and look at where I stopped on that red arrow and count the run. And that's going to be the change in x. So again, I'm going to the right, so 1, 2, 3. And that'll be positive because I'm going towards the positive side of my number line. So then my slope m, remember, is rise over run, which will be 6 over 3 which I want to reduce as much as I can, and I get two. Okay? Same deal for B. Again, going from left to right, you're going to find two points that work. Count the up and down, right? So I'm going to go down one, two. So since I went down, I went toward the negative, so that's a negative two. My run, I'm going to go ahead and stop at that, start at that red arrow and count to the right, one, two, three, four. I went to the right, so it's positive four. So then my slope, again, rise over run, which is negative 2 over 4, and reduce it as much as you can to that negative 1 half, OK? So looking at a table for C, D, and E, how can we find the slope of a line using a table? Well, that's where we're going to use the slope formula. Which, if you remember from the beginning, is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And it doesn't really matter what points you pick. You just want to pick two separate points. So for example, I might look at this first table in C and say, OK, I want this to be my x1, y1, because that's the first point I picked. And then maybe the 0 and the negative 2 be my x2, y2. Right? And then I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in to find m. So x, oh, sorry, y2 minus y1, so make sure you maintain those negatives, over x2, which was 0, minus x1. And x1 is negative 4, so I'm using those parentheses. And then simply simplify to solve. So we get negative 2 plus 2 over 0 plus 4, which equals 0 over 4, which is 0. So my slope is 0. OK? I can do the same thing for D. So I might want to identify my x1, y1, 
x2, y2. And again, I could call this x2 and y2 if I wanted to. It doesn't matter because in the end when we subtract, it'll be the same. Okay, and then plug it into your formula. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Um, sorry, that should be a 3. Okay, and then simplify. So make sure you put the x's and y's in the right spot. That's probably the most common error. I'm going to get 4 over 2, and I can simplify that to 2. Okay, finally e, same deal. So m equals, again, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. A trick here is if you notice that all the x's are the same, this is probably going to be a vertical line, but we can verify that with some algebra. And then we'll indeed see we get something over 0, which is undefined. All right. Go ahead and try the you try problems 1 through 5. All right, you want to check those answers, and then be careful. If you looked at 3, you'll notice I, ha I ended up using the slope formula because when I looked at the graph, I saw, hey, these are going by 2s. So it was a little harder to actually count. So I had to remember each step is 2, so this will be 1, 2, 3 when I went up. So for me, it was just a little easier to count. You also want to make sure you double check. I forgot to mention this earlier, but if you don't have the same scale, like x's are going by 1s and y's are going by 1s, you don't want to count because then your count's going to be off. Then you'd want to use your slope formula. All right, let's take a look at the next idea. So how do I use slope-intercept form? So slope-intercept form is that y equals mx plus b that we are checking for linear functions, right? If we can write a function as, a, if we can determine if a function is linear. So there's two things you want to know. So slope, obviously, we knew this is your rise over run, or your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And the y-intercept is what we talked about before in the last lesson. That's your 0, comma b. So you take those two elements. y and x will always be um, in our equation because we can have any point be x or y on that line, so there's lots of different um, possibilities for that, so we use variables there. But m and b should be actual numbers. So if we take a look at the example, we can pull out um, slope and y-intercept from the equation, and I think this is on the back of your page. So remember, this is y equals mx plus b, where m is slope, and 0 comma b is your y-intercept. So your y-intercept should always be a point, so don't write it as y equals 7 or whatever, because that's a line. So if we take a look at f, I want to take two things out. The slope should always be in front of my x as long as y is by itself. So slope is 2. And then the b should be the number all on its own as long as, again, y is by itself. So my y-intercept, remember, don't put it as negative 3, but it's 0 comma negative 3, right? If you look at G, this is a horizontal line, remember from last time? So if we wanted to rewrite this as slope-intercept form, we want to put in a 0x minus 4.5 because there's no x there. And that makes it really clear that for our horizontal line, slope is 0, and the y-intercept should be 0, negative 4.5, okay? H is that tricky one. Remember, you can't just start pulling things whenever you see an equation. This is standard form. We want to make it slope-intercept form so we could actually use slope-intercept form. So here's where we want to actually solve for y. So I'm going to take away 6x from both sides, bring down the negative with the y, so be careful with that. Then I'm going to divide everything by negative 1 to get y equals positive 6x minus 8. So now I know slope is 6 and my y-intercept is 0, negative 8. Okay? So now we know how to read slope-intercept form. Now we can graph, and then we can identify your x-intercepts or any other points on the line. But once again, you want to make sure this is actually in y equals mx plus b. If it's not, let's transform it. So y plus x equals negative 2. I need to take away the x to get y equals negative x minus 2. So now I know slope is a number in front of x, which is negative 1, or negative 1 over positive 1, which tells me the movement, and my y-intercept is at 0, negative 2. So to graph, I always need a point to start, so I'm going to go to 0, negative 2, and um, remember to put in your numbers. I'm going to go every other because 
and go by 0, 0 0.5 because I write really big on my tablet. All right, so label those numbers on your number line. And then remember to take into account the scale that you created. So if I'm starting at 0, negative 2, let me use a different color to graph. I want to go up, sorry, I want to go down 1, right 1. So that's the way I want to go. I want to go down one entire step and then to the right 1. Since I went by 0.5, I want to make sure I go down 1, 2 lines and then go across 1, 2 lines. So make sure you're being very careful when you are looking at that scale. So if you run out of space going down, we can always do the complete opposite. So instead of going down one, right one, I can go up one, left one. So again, going up one space, left one. And this will also help me find that x-intercept, right? So then I see my line should intersect at negative two on the x-axis. So my x-intercept here is negative two comma zero. And remember, you could also check by um, plugging in zero for y in the equation. That's perfectly fine. I just use my graph, all right? You guys go ahead and try 6 through 11, and let's check those answers in a bit. All right, go ahead and check that work. And you want to see that for number 10, there is no x-intercept because that is a horizontal line. And then with 11, since my line didn't completely go onto the x-axis, I just plugged in 0 for y and found that x equals 6, so my x-intercept at 6, 0. So I can go ahead and use what I learned in the past to do this work as well. Okay, we'll finish the notes in class. Um, please come back with questions.